Good afternoon, class of 2013, and welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. When you first entered into your respective programs at this great institution, each of you did it with a goal in mind. A majority of you wanted to leave here with prospects of obtaining a higher paying job. Some, along with myself, who have masochistic tendencies, tend to love investing countless hours in homework and those dreaded group projects, for the love of learning, of course. Believe it or not, some people enroll just to have something to do. No matter the reasoning behind it, the fact is that you are sitting in these chairs before me, ready to embark on a journey. As in any journey, you need to prepare. You need to gather items to ensure that you reach your destination, the place you want to go. In addition to the obvious things that you would need to embark on this trip, such as food, water, a map, and compass, you also must prepare mentally. <coughs> Get your head in the game. As we all know, this world can be a downright ruthless and unforgiving place, but it can also be one of beauty and enlightenment. If you're a fan of numerology, which is the study of numbers and their meaning, the number eight puts emphasis on careers, finances, authority, but more importantly, balance. So today, I would like to leave you with eight mental reminders or gold nuggets to prepare yourself for the rest of your life. Number one, be your biggest cheerleader. Believe in yourself and people will be forced to believe in you. Billions of people fail to live the life that they always wish to live. They fail to realize their ambitions and give up on their big dreams as soon as they encounter their first obstacle. One of the strongest causes for this attitude is that they simply don't believe in themselves. Believing in yourself is all about being sure that you're going to do whatever you want, even where others are against you. Usually when you decide to take a big challenge or to do something that other people failed at, that is when you will find that everyone tends to put you down. Under the pressure of this criticism, some people start to doubt their own abilities and eventually give up. The few, the few people who manage to believe in themselves are those who continue moving along the path they've chosen, and those are the ones who succeed. Society plays a role in this too because it tends to dictate how we should live our lives. They tell us how we should look, how we should act in certain situations, and even has the audacity to define what a successful life is. But all, the things are, are, all these things are subjective. You may view a successful life as living in a McMansion, complete with a pool, hot tub, and bar set up in the backyard. And another person may view living on a boat and having <coughs> the freedom to travel to wherever their heart desires as success. You should find what your idea of a successful life is and pursue it. In order to do this, you have to believe in yourself and have confidence. Because if you're not your biggest cheerleader, you can easily be swept in the undertow of society's opinions of how your life should be, and it will make you, in the end, an unfulfilled person. Nugget two, define yourself. There's a saying in the marketing industry that reads, if you don't define your brand, product, or service, someone else will. Same goes for individuals. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. Take some time to analyze yourself. What's your code of conduct? What's your ethics policy? Your moral code? What leadership style do you believe in? Also take time to analyze your personality and working relationships. This is important because if you're going to be spending eight hours plus of your waking hours with your coworkers, you might want to be able to get along with them or else you're going to be a miserable person. Take a Myers-Briggs test, which is designed to measure psychological preferences and how people perceive the world and how they make decisions. Or even take the Big Five test, which assesses five personality traits, such as openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism, which it sounds kind of weird, but it's actually being sensitive, nervous, being versus being secure and confident. Not totally crazy. But either way, once you have defined yourself, don't deviate which leads to the third nugget I would like to leave with you today. Maintain yourself. Once you define yourself, you need to maintain yourself. Stand 100% behind your convictions and let that be the guide or map to how you should live your life. No one likes a hypocrite and those who don't practice what they preach. There will be times in your life in which your integrity, ethics, and morals will be tested. People will be watching what you do and how you react to certain situations. Be in tune with yourself. You can make better decisions, live a life with no regrets, and be able to face yourself in the morning. 
You can tell that you aren't being true to yourself when you start, one, thinking that you're above the rules, that the rules don't apply to you. Telling people to mind their own business, or I don't have to explain myself to you. That's defensive behavior. When you start telling yourself, just, just this once I'll do this, or I'm already this far in, that's rationalizing your bad behavior. Putting on airs, basically lying, not being truthful to yourself. And probably the biggest red flag is regretting decisions. So when you feel that you're in one of those situations, realign and get back in tune with yourself and maintain your standards. Nugget four, dream it, plan it, do it. Dreams tend to be unfocused and nonspecific. To turn a dream into a goal, people need to decide on two things, how much and by when. Here's a perfect example. There's a dream that someone may have to live in a beautiful house in the country with a big garden and a stream. The goal in that context would be to own a house with five bedrooms and a garden or at least one acre and a stream running through it, looking out over rolling countryside within two hours commute from London by 5 p.m. on April 1st, 2008, I will have this house. That is a goal. A dream is a goal with, without legs. It is a wonderful thing to have, can be the guiding passion of your life, but unless you clarify it and give it the legs to move toward you, getting there is going to be a much a matter of luck at that point. To transfer a dream into a reachable goal, you must clarify it, provide the details, make it so clear that you can see it, feel it, know what you will feel like when you get there. This works for you in many ways. When you have decided on your goals, the next stage is to clarify them and make them specific. In order to do this, write specifications for each goal as if writing out a detailed work order. This should include every possible detail. For example, if you want a certain house, write down its specifics in vivid detail. The location, the size, and the appearance of the garden surrounding area, the interior, furniture, artwork, sound system, floor plan. If you find a picture of the house you're looking for or the interiors you want, cut those out and put them on a wall somewhere and look at them every day. They will make your visualizations even more intense and effective. Write down big goals that will stretch you, as well as goals that you can achieve in the short term as well. It is important to have some goals that require us to grow in order to achieve them, perhaps to learn new skills or build new relationships. You may feel uncomfortable with big goals because they are so far outside of your comfort zone. But this is an important challenge that will help you to achieve your full potential. Nugget five, five fall seven times, stand up eight. Guess who said this quote? I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost almost 300 games. On 26 occasions, I have been entrusted to take the winning shot and I missed. I have failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. His biography on the National Basketball Association website states, by acclamation, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Some may be thinking, the greatest basketball player in the world really missed 9,000 shots? It's because he fell seven times and stood up eight. Another example of a failure turned into a success is a famous musical artist. His first recordings went nowhere. After that, he tried to join a vocal quartet, and he was told that he couldn't sing. <laughs> Finally, right before he became popular, he was told, you ain't going nowhere, son. You ought to go back to driving a truck. That man is now known as the king of rock and roll, or for short, the king, Elvis Presley. Another example is a famous inventor who enlightened the world. When asked about the many thousands of failures he had when trying to create the light bulb, he famously said, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. But there's even more to it than that. As a child, he was thought to be dumb and told that he would never be a success by many of his teachers, simply because his mind often wandered in class. Good thing for us that the greatest inventor in history, Thomas Edison, did not listen. Another example of falling seven times and standing up eight. What these stories tell us is that it's perfectly okay to fail, as long as we get back up. It's when you don't get back up that we truly have failed. Learn from your mistakes and take a different approach. Remember that if it's easy, it's not worth it. And if it's worth it, it's not going to be easy. 
Nugget six, pay your dues. In life, you must prove yourself before you're granted rights and privileges. Before you get your driver's license, you have to take a driver's ed test, demonstrating your knowledge on rules of the road. Before joining a sorority or fraternity, you must go through the pledging process showing that you're serious about joining the organization. Before being a full-time staff member, you have to pass your, your probationary period. Before becoming a graduate, you must do the required coursework. Do you see a pattern here? Unfortunately, a good chunk of us here today was born in the entitlement generation, which is defined as the group born between 1979 and 1994, who believe they are owed certain rights and benefits without further justification. You have to put in blood, sweat, and tears before getting to our goals. We have to put in the effort before reaching success. Basically, before we can get member access, we have to pay our dues. Simple as that. Nugget number seven, don't pay back kindness, pay it forward. You didn't do it alone. This, your graduation, you didn't do it alone. You may be thinking, yeah, yeah I did. I was the one staying up until 2 a.m. at the Jane Bancroft Library studying for a comprehensive exam that was supposed to be held in six hours. Or I was the one rallying my group members to present a presentation and try and figure out who's speaking and when. You're right, you did do all of that. But think of the people who had to tolerate you in your irritable, sleep-deprived state of mind. <laughs> think of those who had to put up with you being stressed out and venting at the end of the semesters. Think of those who helped you along the way. Your mom, dad, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, son or daughter, professors, faculty and staff, and possibly co-workers of your job. All of these people and possibly more have contributed to you being able to wear that cap and gown today. When thanking them, don't say I owe you one. Instead say, I'll pay it forward. It means more and it goes a lot further. I'll give you an example of a payback. Say my dad gave me $10. I could say, I'll pay you back. Give him the money when I get paid and that'll be the end of that. Or, when you pay it forward, instead of me saying that, instead of me paying it back to him, someone else could be in need of that $10. If I gave it to a homeless man or donated it to charity, that original favor of that gift is still blessing someone and is still in the process of being a good deed, rather than ending by paying it forward. So with your education, don't pay it back. And when I say that, I don't mean literally, because we all know what happens when Uncle Sam doesn't get his money for student loans. But pay it forward. Make your job, organization, community, the world even, a better place to live in. Leave the world making it better, better than you found it by paying it forward. And the last nugget, stay on top of your game. Businesses change, industries change, technology changes. I faintly remember the big floppy disk in kindergarten that we had to put into the big colorful Apple Macintosh computers. And in a matter of 15 years, we went from that to smaller floppy disks, to CDs, thumb drives, and to virtual clouds where we now host all of our information. What I'm trying to illustrate is that the world is constantly changing. And if you want to remain competitive, you have to keep learning. Your learning doesn't end just because you have a diploma in your hands now. It ends when you're six feet under. But in the meantime, you have a lot to learn between now and then. Keep in mind flexibility and adaptability is a highly desired trait looked for in potential employees. You never want to grow complacent. When you do, that is when the rug will be pulled out from under you and your replacement will be staring at you in the face. Stay on top of your game and continue learning new things so you stay relevant and up to date. As you take the first steps that will mark the rest of your life, remember these things. For when you find yourself in despair and your vision is clouded, realigning your mind can be the key to unlocking doors and shattering any barriers. So to you, University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee, Class of 2013, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you imagine. Or, as Dr. Seuss once wrote, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. 
You are on your own and you know what you know. You are the person who will decide where to go. Go Bulls.